Hello and welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video. It's now literally days until your IGCSE exams and we had just the grand final of which is the most difficult topic that you find. Thank you for 917 votes on this and you can see mensuration won this with a whopping 74% over circle theorems. So you've asked for mensuration questions. I picked out two of the hardest questions I can find. Also dipping into other topics as well, particularly on paper. Paper four. So let's get started. This is question 22 here, a pretty tricky one. And one thing to realize here, this is a 2D shape. It's not a 3D shape. That can be quite confusing at the start. So we have a rhombus. So if we know it's a rhombus, we know that all these sides are the same. We also know the opposite angles here are also the same. So notice as I'm going through the question, I'm using the information I know about these shapes. Now, BAC, so the bit at the top here, is a sector of a circle with center B. And at the bottom, it's exactly the same idea. DAC is a sector of the circle with center D. And from that information, we somehow need to find the shaded area. Now, generally with these kinds of questions, one of the things to do is actually just draw a straight line going all the way across because we often find triangles and sectors and then work with exactly what areas that we have. So the first thing I'm going to do here is work out the area of the triangle. So this is really important about labeling here. So triangle ABC. Of course, this is going to be the same as triangle ADC at the bottom. And we're going to use the formula, the half AB sine C formula. Now, if you're doing 0, 0580, you don't have a formula sheet. 0607, you do. 2025, that's a bit different. So the way we work out the area of the triangle, we do a half times A and B. So these are these sides here. So both are going to be 13.6. And then we times by the sine of the angle in between making sure your calculator is in degrees. That is very important. So if we pop that in, so I'm going to do 0 0.5 times 13.6 times 13.6 times the sine of the angle in between. That gives us 60.67. Notice I'm not rushing to simplify anything at this point, but I do have that worked out. We can also work out the sector here. So if I draw this in, we can actually work out the area of this is just the sector of the circle. So if I'm doing the sector, I'm going to use the word here, sector. This is going to be equal to the angle 41 over 360 times a full circle or the area of a full circle. That's pi r squared. So pi times 13.6 squared. Now, if I put that into my calculator, so 41 over 360 times pi times 13.6 squared. That's going to give us, again, some number. So 66.177. Then we have a little bit of a think about this and go, well, if we found the difference between these results, so difference between 60.67 and 66.177, the difference between that, so our triangle and the sector, well, the difference between that is going to be equal to this area here. So if I find the difference between these two things, so I'm just taking our 66.177 and then minusing the 60.67 dot, 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 I find the shaded area that I've just indicated. So if I do that on my calculator, so 0 0.5 times 13.6 times 13.6 times the sine of 41, making sure you've got enough brackets in there, I get my answer here of 5.5049. Now, if I think about the bottom part here, and it's a symmetrical, so I can just then times by two at the end. If I take the area of the triangle minus this shaded area, so this shaded area, then that will give me the area of this. So if I take... So if I do shaded of AD, ACD, so if I take the area of the triangle, that was the 60.67 stuff from before. So if I do that, 13.6 times 6. So I'm typing it in again to get a very accurate answer. So the 60.67 dot, 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 
minus this 5.5049 dot 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 that's going to give me 55.16 that gives me one of these shaded areas but I want both so the total so I want this shaded area at the bottom and the shaded area at the top so I just take the answer and times by two and that will give me my final answer again really avoiding to round anything here so 110.334 dot 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 and again if we round that we can get 110.3 square centimeters and that gives us all four marks for the particular question. Really tricky, because the first thing you think is some sort of 3D cone going on. That's the first thing I thought about. But actually, once you appreciate it's 2D, using this idea of the triangle and the sector to work out important areas, you can problem solve through to get our final answer here. So just show you the mark scheme very quickly here. Again, four marks. Again, if you're good with just writing down what you need without using the calculator too often you can just get a whopping three method marks just by writing this down immediately but again that takes quite a lot of visualization i think the way i've approached this okay let's work out some areas we do know and then see if we can work out some of these areas in the middle and then work in the subtraction method i think this is the most straightforward approach Okay, on to question eight here. So here we've got a paper four star question on mensuration. Again, these are all very up to date questions. So you've got the very best preparation. If you're liking this video and you're thinking this is making a lot of sense now, then please do like and subscribe because then this video gets spread out to as many people as possible just days before their exam. Right, question eight here. So we've got a shape made from a major sector, AOB, so a part of a circle, and two triangles, OBC, AOD. Okay, and it's a slightly unfamiliar question. We've got a nice mixture of topics in here. And the first thing we need to show is that angle BOC is equal to 19.5 degrees. So I've got my triangle BOC. I tend to try and zoom in on that triangle. So I'm going to draw it separately over here. So this is B, this is O, and this is C. So I'm just copying it across so I can visualize what's going on. Now we're looking for the angle BOC, so this angle here, and we can just use our normal soccer toa here to work out that angle. So we've got the opposite and hypotenuse, so we're going to be using so. so that means sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, so that's 2 divided by 6. So to work out theta on its own, we're doing inverse sine of 2 over 6. Please make sure your calculator is in degrees, otherwise very bad things happen. So please don't be in that situation. And we get 19.47 dot dot dot. So if we round that, of course, that's going to be 19.5 degrees. And that gives us then the two marks for that question. Now, before I even move on, I'm going to pop that in my diagram. I might need that later on. So it's useful to have there. Now we need to find the area of the major sector AOB. Exactly what I was talking about here, using the first part to do the second part. So we want the area of this part here. However, we need to work out then the angle of this sector. This is where the 19.5 becomes very useful. Now angles around a point add up to 360. So to work out that angle, I do 360 minus the two angles I do know. 135 and I'm going to use their answer now the 19.5 so if I pop that into my calculator 360 minus again there's no reason on 0580 to just pop this into your calculator so that gives us then 205.5 degrees now notice here this is a sector so OB and OA are the same this is also six centimeters useful for later on so to work out this area Using the similar formula from before, we take the angle, 205.5 divided by 360 times pi r squared, so pi times 6 squared. All I need to do to write for my working here, I don't need to do anything else. Then keep it simple. And that gives us, as a decimal, 64.55. Again, we generally round to one decimal place. So 64.6, and that's going to be square centimetres. They generally give us the units on Cambridge. We're not going to get a mark taken off for forgetting the square centimetres. Now we're on to the next question here, which is C is the midpoint of OD. 
So let's go back. So C is the midpoint of OD, so this line here. And we need to find AD. So we're looking for this side here. Okay, so my first thought is I can actually use my triangle from before. So notice you can use previous parts of the question. Now, because I've got two sides and a right angle, I can use Pythagoras on this. And I always recommend students to do this in one smooth calculation rather than going through two or three steps. So OC here is just equal to the square root of 6 squared minus 2 squared. We're minusing because we're looking for a shorter side. And I'm going to be leaving this in third form. So even if I put this in my calculator, still going to leave this now as 4 root 2. I'm not going to work this out as a decimal. So if this is equal to 4 root 2, so this length here, now because C is a midpoint, the entire line, so if we take the line O, D, so do it in a different color. That's going to be two lots of four root two. So that's going to be equal to eight root two. So I haven't really thought too much about AD, but I have thought about, okay, let's just work out some lengths and see then what we can do with the question. So I'm using the question that's made this point about the midpoint. I'm going to work out some more stuff and then see what I can do with it. Now we get to a situation, this is, this is a tricky question because it's using lots of different skills. We have a side here, we have a side here, so the 8 root 2, and an angle in the middle, and we're looking for this side here. As soon as I've talked about it in this way, the cosine rule then, then pops out because we have two sides, included angle, and we're looking for the other side. So if we want to use the cosine rule, so c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of c. Let's label everything up here. So this is our small c. This is our big c. The other two sides are just a and b. And my trick here is a whopping five mark question. However, I could write this rule just already with the square root in. So I'm just square rooting both sides. All I need to do is pick up a load of method marks is just put everything in. So, so C is equal to, so we've got the square root here. Let's go back. So we've got six squared plus eight root two. Remember the entire line here. So eight root two all squared minus two times six times eight root two times the cosine of the angle in between. Again, always double checking 135 got everything in that I want. And now we can do this in one smooth calculation on the calculator. Again, just being very careful, making sure we've got all the right numbers in here. But again, this is a technique you need to build up of writing enough working, but not too much working that you're wasting time in the exam. Now, if I work my way through this, I get to my final answer of 16.12 dot, dot, dot. Again, we like to round to one decimal place, so 16.1 centimeters to one DP, and that will give us all five marks on that question. Okay, and now we need to find the total area of the shape. So if we go back here, so what shapes do we have? We've got the, the sector here, but we've already worked that out. So we've already got the 64.6. So again, we don't wanna do extra work that we don't need to do. So all we need to do is work out the area of this triangle here and the area of this triangle as well. Okay, well, we've got some work already here. We know this is equal to four root two. So let's break this down. So area of sector, we worked out before that was 64.6. Or 64.55 dot 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 the area of the triangle so this triangle here so if I draw another sketch of this in wrong way around but we've still got two centimeters six centimeters right angle and four root two four root two so the area of that triangle will be equal to base times height so two times four root two and then divide it by two and then we need to work out the area of the other triangle, so this large triangle. Again, we can use half AB sine C, but all the information for that. So half AB sine C, that's half times six times eight 
root two, just double checking, half times six times eight root two times the sine of 135. So if we put all this together, so you have 64.55 plus uh, two times four root two divided by two, and then plus, making sure everything is where it should be, plus 0 0.5 times six times eight root two, again taking the whole length of the line, times sine 135, gives us a final answer of, so if you're adding all these together, we then get 94.206, rounding then to 94.2 square centimetres for our four marks. Don't be intimidated by a four mark question. Think about, okay, how can I use what I've already got? What extra do I need to put in? And then just go through nice and steadily. Okay, on to part B here. So a sector of a circle, again, so I'm just gonna draw a random sector, has a radius of eight centimeters and an area of 160 square centimeters. Mathematically similar, again, that's a trigger word. If you're interested in trigger words, check out the video above. So it has radius 20 centimeters. Okay, so as soon as I see that, so we've got 20 centimeters, I know I'm gonna to have to use scale factors in some shape or form, and then calculate the area important of the larger sector. So the first thing I'm gonna do is work out the length scale factor. And the way I do that is take big here, divided by small. So 20 divided by eight, that gives me then five over two. Now I want to know the area scale factor because we're looking for an area, hence why I underlined this word. So area scale factor is five over two squared because we're working with square units here. So if I square that, I get then 25 over four. I'm happy to leave it as fractions. So to work out the area of the larger, I take the area of the smaller, 160, and times by my new scale factor, 25 over four. I don't really need a calculator for this, but why not? And that gives us the final answer of 1,000. Again, trigger word, really important. As soon as I've seen similarity, mathematically similar, I'm like, ah, scale factors, lengths, areas, volumes, I need to be able to use that effectively. Okay, so you can see the solutions here and all the mark schemes, which is important to go through and understand where you're picking up these particular marks. Very, very important. And of course, this question looks quite complicated from the mark scheme, but you can keep these things very, very simple. And if you're looking to improve your mensuration overall, I know a lot of students struggle with this, as you saw at the poll earlier, then this video is really the video for you. It's called Advanced Mensuration. Uh, not many students are aware this video does exist out there. And this goes through some really hard questions, maybe not as hard as this particular video, but certainly getting you up to speed with those ANA star style mensuration questions which could make the difference grade-wise.